Kia ora. My niece Harriet drew this for me. Only thing is, we all know Earth doesn't really look like this. It looks more like this. Because unfortunately, in this era of the Anthropocene, we've done this. You don't need to see these graphs to understand that in the last 50 years, our human impact on Earth has been so significant, it's called the Great Acceleration. Only, it's not great. Not for Earth, and not for us. Things are so compromised with our well-being that we cope by disassociating in our minds from Earth. In fact, a lot of the time, it feels like we've forgotten we actually depend on Earth for life. And we lack a healthy cultural connection with Earth. Our ancestors may have had this, and many indigenous peoples still do. And yet we have diminished the importance of this, and we are left with nothing but a relationship of convenience. My work as an occupational therapist over the last 20 years has focused on how what we do makes us feel. And it, wouldn't, it would be safe to say that what we're doing isn't making us feel that great at the moment. So I've been hunting for an answer. And everywhere I find waste. Waste is an extraordinary indicator of where our relationship with Earth and ourselves is at. I've come to see waste as the missing out on opportunities to build a vital and healthy relationship with Earth. And the thing is, that waste isn't just a waste of Earth's resources, it's also a waste of ourselves and our capabilities. So I started working with waste. In 2000, I started an enterprise called Rekindle that focused initially on wood waste. Returning to live in post-quake Christchurch in 2012, I felt compelled to respond to the large-scale, hasty, wasteful demolition of thousands of buildings that meant so much to so many people. From 2012 to 2015, this incredible team and I ran a furniture manufacturing workshop and sold furniture in order to divert more timber from waste. We sold hundreds of chairs, tables and stools, and then used the offcuts to make other objects. This all happened at a time of relative chaos against all odds. And to be honest, it was taxing and took all of our resources. We struggled to break even. But it was successful in other ways, particularly in terms of raising awareness of demolition waste and reuse. Then there was our whole house reuse project. This involved over 250 people from across New Zealand and the world coming together to reuse one beloved residential red zone home that would have otherwise been wasted. These are just eight of over 400 treasures that were made from that one home. This taught me the power of craft and that valuing the resources we have can enable huge outcomes. And even though I'd done all this work, and that reusing waste is definitely constructive, I still felt it wasn't enough of a solution. So I thought long and hard about what the opposite of wastefulness would look like. We see this in the circular economy and cradle-to-cradle design and other approaches that consider the full life cycle of Earth's resources. And what I found was resourcefulness. I found this as a healthy relationship with Earth. And the thing is, our true human nature includes an extraordinary ability to be resourceful. And this ensures our wellness and Earth's. At an individual level, resourcefulness feeds our inner resources. It gives us the tools that strengthen our sense of self and our identity. It makes us feel capable, adaptable, and resilient, that we can cope with whatever life or earth throws at us. And every single one of us has a unique set of inner resources. When our resources are not feeling strong, when we feel unwell, we feel weak, fragile, and that our resources are unreliable, and that is a great source of anxiety. That is when life feels beyond our resources. 
Being resourceful includes knowing and valuing the resources you have inside you and around you, the resources in other people that you can value and trust, and the resources in the special place where you live. Resourcefulness gives us great and very special knowledge about the ecosystems we live within, and this enables us to live in a regenerative way. Resourcefulness is a complex interaction between our inner resources and Earth's resources, upon which we desperately depend. It is made up of a set of skills that enable us to meet our needs and live lives we have reason to value without damaging this beautiful planet. These skills are so many, but include things like being able to grow your own food, being able to build warm and dry homes, being able to make the clothing and footwear you need, and other necessities. The problem is that so many of these resourceful skills are at risk of being lost. A large subset of these vital skills falls within the domain of traditional craft. And it was through learning traditional crafts that I came to understand the magic of turning nothing into something and how greatly that contributes to our well-being. I lived in the UK in my 20s to 30s and learned a number of craft traditions. The Orkney chair was so special to me because it struck me as being so very resourceful. All it used to use was oat straw and driftwood because that was all people had to make what they needed. The outcome is a stunning and unusual, practical style of furniture and one that is so unique to that place. Traditional craft has become so displaced, but it could not be more relevant. Craft is the skilled relationship between us and Earth. Craft gives us the means to harness and care for the resources around us, to create what we need from what we have. I believe craft should sit at the heart of our education and training so that we can all really build our found, the foundations of our well-being. Nowadays in Christchurch, Rekindle focuses on creating opportunities for resourcefulness, We do this by promoting craft traditions that are inherently resourceful. We run a workshop where we share resourceful skills, and we are building up to our first festival called Necessary Traditions in 2018. Our work celebrates how relevant the role of resourceful craft is now and for the future. As an example, we focus on simple local resources that are abundant and undervalued, like these cabbage tree or tococa leaves. We receive timber from the city's parks and show value in this by using it for woodworking, when otherwise it would become wood chip. We use green woodworking as the tools, skill and knowledge involved are accessible and rewarding. This ancient craft gives us a unique understanding of this special resource and its qualities. Resourcefulness provides opportunities to come together to learn and work alongside each other. This is essential to our well-being now, and I believe even more so in the future. Those of us with barriers to work know exactly how much we miss work when it's gone. And working manually or physically, this is also vital to our well-being. And We cannot gain this through experiences with passive digital technology. We need manual skills to live resourceful lives, and these skills need to be kept alive. As resourceful individuals, our well-being is increased when we use all of our capabilities. As resourceful communities, we need to share resources, combine our capabilities to enable the maximal resource efficiency that is possible when we work together. This gives a vital shared purpose that our communities are missing. It overcomes social isolation. Resourcefulness is growing. We can see this in the community repair and reuse initiatives, in community gardens and the food resilience networks, 
We can see this in mutual aid networks and time banking and community-owned community assets that foster the sharing of resources. But this needs to grow more. Resourcefulness in our built environment is essential too. We need to look at our built space as a resource we really need to make the most of. We need more shared use of commercial space so that it meets a variety of needs. And resourcefulness in business. To ensure we are resource efficient, we must stop externalizing costs like waste, pollution, and the erosion of our well-being and in the increase in inequity. And as a country, those making decisions centrally enable resourcefulness by ensuring that all policy is inherently resourceful. For example, in New Zealand, we need a good hard review of the Building Act and the Waste Minimisation Act, as these are currently barriers to resourcefulness and perpetuate a lack of it. Resourcefulness is not just a good personality trait. It is an essential and practical tool for human and planetary well-being. It brings to life essential concepts like the circular economy and Kate Raworth's donut economics. And we need to see this reflected in our living standards framework to really address our well-being. So, to find the well-being that we all crave, look to your resourceful self. Make the most of what you have. Build your life on a foundation of a resourceful and caring relationship with Earth, as this is the most essential and healthy relationship you and I have. Thank you.